All right, so um, Greg told me to come here and, uh, and to try to encourage people in the statistical community uh, to engage in research. So my talk doesn't have a lot of statistics in it. Um, uh, but in some ways, what I'm uh, pitching to you, uh, the statistical community here is a return to your roots uh, and uh, in effectively thinking about place the way statisticians like Fisher initially thought about place and uh, all those of you in this room that are statisticians would know that Fisher spent a big chunk of his career on agricultural research experiments, uh, including the longest running uh, experiment on, uh, on grass, uh, park grass, <laughs> that's been continuously running since the 1850s. Um, and so uh, the kind of research I'm talking about really is in some ways focusing on place uh, but thinking about, from a statistics standpoint, about uh, placing the original kind of experimental model. Um, so I'm going to be talking about work that, uh, that I've been conducting with uh, colleagues. Uh, my primary colleague uh, has been uh, Charlie Branis, who's now at Columbia University, and he's chair of epidemiology. Um, but this experiment that I'm going to highlight uh, was really made in some ways with, with uh, Charlie and I worked on the, designing this together, but we had the help of, um, of uh, Tom, uh, Tom uh, Tenhav, who, uh, who passed away, who was a statistician who um, maybe some of you in this room know in terms of how to design uh, a cluster randomized trial with the appropriate amount of statistical power. So um, uh, again, this, this experiment was actually made possible because of, of Tom's collaboration. So it's probably, it's, for those of you who are, who are criminologists, this isn't new information. For those of you who aren't, um, you may not be aware of just how clustered uh, the problems of gun violence are in even cities with high rates uh, of, of gun violence. So in Philadelphia, for example, 4.2% of blocks, uh, I just calculated this the other day, accounted for 50% of all reported shootings in the city. We see results like this that are similar in almost any major big city uh, with gun violence problems. St. Louis, Boston, Chicago, New York, although New York and Boston don't have nearly the gun violence problems of, of St. Louis, Philadelphia, uh, and, uh, and Chicago. So this is Philadelphia, for example. You can see that basically you get 50% of, of all the shootings in the city at 5% of the blocks. And then by the time you're at just under 20% uh, just under of the blocks, you basically have every place that has a shooting, right? So most of the cities, most of the city of Philadelphia is not experiencing shootings. So this is trying to get to the point that maybe place really matters. So we have, given this concentration of gun violence, it makes sense to think more strategically about places. And are there things we can do in places to curb uh, these pockets of gun violence. Um, and some features of places that we know that are often uh, associated with gun violence are things like concentrated poverty, uh, dilapidated, run-down homes, uh, and vacant and abandoned properties, and vacant, often torn down homes that become vacant spaces. This is a problem uh, in cities like St. Louis, Philadelphia, Chicago, not Washington, D.C. So if you're thinking from D.C., you're probably not thinking about a, about a bunch of vacant spaces. Um, and so the pitch I'm making is that cities should really think about programs that can abate some aspect of this blight and vacancy and maybe address one of the proximal causes for gun violence um, and why they cluster in these places. Um, and I'm going to give you a little, like a two minutes of crim theory of why this might matter, and then show you some evidence. Um, so there's a theory of action here that suggests uh, from different theories like crime prevention through environmental design, situational crime prevention, uh, and uh, what's been popularized as broken windows theory, um, uh, and also uh, kind of incorrectly um, understood. But the basic idea here is that things like overgrown shrubs, trees, um, uh, vacant lots, they reduce the visibility of criminal activity um, on, on streets, makes it harder to see if someone's out engaging in nefarious behavior. Um, they also send disorder signals to a neighborhood that maybe no one cares. So this, the first point connects to ideas in situational crime prevention. 
or crime prevention through environmental design, the idea that you make a place more or less attractive based on kind of the cues there. Broken windows theory, basically the idea that norms of civility change when you see lots of blight and disorder. Um, and um, that may then encourage more crime or more criminal behavior. Uh, and then from a kind of a gun violence standpoint, think about what leads to gun violence in these pockets of crime. It's often criminal activity or individuals engaged in criminal activity. I can tell you a little bit about our work in Philadelphia uh, with Philippe uh, who, uh, Bourgeois, who is an anthropologist who was looking at some of these vacant lots and what he was seeing, the drug activity uh, and the beefs that start. And, um, and so some, there's some ideas uh, behind you know, this criminal activity leading to, to gun violence. Okay, so uh, I'll pl go through this really quickly, but this is basically kind of the logic model. Blighted, blighted vacant spaces, it's unpleasant. Potentially, incivilities go up. Residents tend to avoid these spaces. Uh, you know, criminals may be emboldened. I didn't mention that before. So that often, if people are afraid of a place, then they're not going to engage in using that space. Uh, you know, there's crime can go up, including gun violence. Health goes down. Talking about stress uh, increasing and so forth. Um, uh, even depression getting worse for residents. People leave. Businesses close and this cycle continues. So uh, that's kind of depressing. Um, but the idea is that maybe we can think more holistically about crime and communities health from a community health perspective uh, and thinking more strategically about place. And so this is a quote from, uh, from James Q and George Kelling's paper where they said, just as physicians now recognize the importance of fostering health rather than simply treating illness so much the police and the rest of us recognize the importance of maintaining intact communities without broken windows. That's the last line of their article. So this idea about maybe fixing the places. So the benefits, I'm gonna argue of, of addressing uh, vacant land, fixing blight and abandonment, it's fairly straightforward. Every, everyone here in this room can do it. You can pick up trash, uh, you can mow lawns, most of us, um, uh, or you can hire somebody to do it for you, right? Um, uh, programs can be scaled to entire cities, um, and the remediations that can be, can be designed in ways that are potentially uh, not that expensive to maintain. So I'm going to give you an example of that, but this, isn't just, this is just one example from Philadelphia. There are plenty of others. Um, and there's some evidence now, increasing evidence from scientific studies that there are successful programs out there uh, and that cities can replicate. Uh, and try to allow residents to stay in those communities uh, and not lead to further abandonment. And one of the potential benefits is reducing gun violence. So the idea is to use a randomized trial. I don't know, oh, there it goes, okay. So everyone here in this room is familiar with randomized trials, I presume. Um, but this is more for a lay audience, this graph. Um, but using the same model we would use for medicine, uh, but instead of use it for place, which actually, uh, I should have actually put the original park grass experiment up here, right, and just said now we're just moving from the 1850s, right, uh, to, the, uh, to the 2000s. Uh, and this is what we've done in, in Philadelphia. So basically randomized places to either be cleaned and greened or to remain in their uh, usual state of disorder and blight. Uh, now, the reason we, we were able to do this uh, in Philadelphia, a randomized trial this way, was originally uh, Charlie and I worked on a quasi-experimental evaluation of, of the city's cleaning and greening effort, where we found uh, gun violence is one of the outcomes that seemed to, be, uh, to, to, to go down the most after lots were cleaned and green. Uh, we did our best to try to match lots that looked similar, but we had no idea to, you know, of the complete selection process. So we thought it justified a randomized trial um, from, F, for, you know, from, uh, um, from the standpoint of equipoise, not knowing if it really works. Uh, and because Philadelphia has an abundance still of vacant lots, uh, we didn't have an ethical problem with running an experiment. Uh, and we actually, all the control lots in the study eventually got treated. Uh, so uh, the National Institutes of Health actually paid for grass seed um, mm -hmm. and uh, the intervention 
because we're running an intervention, just like in a, you know, just like a surgical intervention. It's just instead we're hiring uh, through the uh, Pennsylvania Horticultural Society. We're hiring uh, contractors to uh, clean up vacant lots. So this started this program in in Philadelphia started uh, the PHS program, the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society's Land Care Program. Started in 1996 in Kensington. A uh, local neighborhood association organized and decided to try to do something to keep, clean up vacant lots. They basically noticed that the PHS was running community garden program nearby and said, hey, would you mind maybe uh, working with us to clean up some of these vacant lots? And so it started as that pilot and then it spread across the city. So the basic idea is to remove the trash and debris, plant, uh, grade the land, plant grass seeds, uh, maybe a few small trees or bushes, uh, and install a low wooden uh, post and rail fence. Uh, so here's the basic uh, randomized trial we ran. Uh, so what we did is uh, we, 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 we did the, re the research side, but PHS oversaw the treatment, which was, which was you know, take a vacant spot like this. This is a very large vacant lot. Uh, uh, clean it, uh, you know, um, level it out, and then plant the grass uh, and, uh, and a few trees and that rail fence. And we did this for approximately uh, 541 different lots, and it was set up as a cluster randomized trial. So uh, Tom was helpful in, just, in helping us figure out the power for this, but in each region of the city, uh, there is, uh, so, you know, each region of the city, there are clusters uh, that were formed, uh, and then each one of those clusters, uh, about 133, if I remember correctly, are ra then randomly assigned um, uh, to, to one of the treatments. So the, this is the primary treatment. Then we had kind of a lower end treatment, which is basically just mowing and picking up the trash, uh, and, and then the control condition, which is uh, doing nothing. Um, I will uh, go just mention real quickly um, that this program, even though we ran it as a trial, is now kind of a continuous program ongoing in the city. Uh, and the city, uh, now PHS, uh, maintains about 12,000 vacant lots, uh, 18 million square feet of land. Uh, the city of Philadelphia still has about 30,000 vacant lots to go. So, um, uh, and the mayor's action plan on gun violence uh, mentioned actually doing the rest of the city. So, uh, which uh, I'd be happy if they did that. Um, they just have to come up with $25 million. Um, it's about $5 per square foot uh, to do the work uh, and about uh, 50 cents per square, uh, square meter, excuse me, uh, per, per square meter to do the maintenance. So about $150 a year. It's basically like the cost of mowing a, a, small, uh, a small yard. Um, early findings we had, we ran a, a uh, Charlie ran a basic um, walking trial and so one of the things we found at the very beginning of the uh, experiment, uh, Charlie, along with Gina South, did this walking trial where they recruited people in the neighborhood to walk by these lots before and after they were treated or the control condition. And they found uh, that heart stress, stress levels go up when people walk by vacant lots um, and that you saw a reduction in stress in people doing this walking trial in the areas that were remediated. So at least connected to some of the theoretical ideas we had. But it was a small walking trial, um, and, but it didn't form the larger work. So heart rate drops uh, when people walk by newly green spaces. Uh, so here's a basic layout of the intervention. Like each region of the city uh, was divided up, and then we have clusters of vacant lots that are randomized. Um, in terms of uh, the results, what we found in an 18-month pre-post is a substantial reduction in, uh, in all crime, um, but the large, uh, large reductions in nuisance crime, so these are things like disorderly conduct, public drinking, um, uh, vandalism, uh, and a substantial reduction in gun assaults. Uh, we found the largest effects were in areas, and this is combining the two treatments. Uh, the, you know, the full treatment versus just the kind of mowing and maintaining. Um, the largest reductions we found in, in areas that were below uh, poverty in Philadelphia's, pov not federal poverty line, but Philadelphia's level of poverty. So this is, you know, 
a considerable amount of poverty. Um, and those are areas that, that also are, have higher rates in, in the first place of gun violence. Subsequent uh, uh, study, uh, so these are gun assaults. So these are, this is data from the police where people report that they, uh, somebody either pointed or shot a gun at them. Um, and so uh, our question was, will we see the same kind of thing if we actually focused on actual shootings? And uh, so uh, we uh, followed up this study uh, and Greg uh, Ridgway here participated in helping sure we got the analysis done correctly on this. Um, and what we found is when we look at shootings reported to the police where someone was actually shot by a bullet uh, and ended up in the hospital or, 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 um, or, or died as a result, about 80% of the time people survive. Philadelphia has a really good emergency response. We have level, was it level five trauma centers? I think that's the correct term. Um, it's a very effective trauma care. Uh, so a lot of people get saved from our shootings, um, but we found substantial reductions uh, in shootings. No difference between the kind of partial treatment and the full treatment, but in every case, but overall, uh, substantial reductions on the order of uh, <clears throat> six to eight uh, percent by simply uh, cleaning uh, and greening uh, ma or maintaining a, a vacant lot. So the implications for gun violence from this kind of simple kind of place-based approach, about $15,000 investment to avert a single shooting. Um, I don't have to tell you that that is a, survives any kind of cost-benefit calculation, right? <laughs> um, so it's pretty, pretty inexpensive. Um, you know, sub suggests suggestive, I mean, we don't know for sure, but that, you know, you could uh, get a, a sizable reduction overall in a city by scaling this up even more. Um, uh, and it is now part of the city's violence prevention plan. Now, I should qualify with this and say that this isn't, you know, we're talking about six, you know, to eight percent. Uh, and that's what we saw in the, in the previous kind of quasi-experimental analysis. So this isn't going to solve the gun violence problem in Philadelphia, but it would make a considerable dent. Uh, and it's something you might want, cities might want to do for other reasons, which we could discuss too. Like who wants, you know, who wants this next to your house? You know, I mean, it's not good for your resale value or anything else, not to mention other things that come along with that, like rodents. Um, <clears throat> So, um, I'll, and I'll just say that there are other studies, they're all quasi-experimental, uh, that have been done in Youngstown, Ohio, Flint, Michigan, um, that find similar kind of uh, violence reduction benefits. They don't focus specifically on gun violence, although I believe uh, the, the uh, Youngstown, uh, Ohio uh, study does see some reductions in violence that are mostly gun-related. Um, there are... Uh, uh, two trials in the field right now, one in Flint and one in New Orleans, um, that are, uh, are, are doing something like this. We also have a, a trial right now in the field in Philadelphia where we're taking some of these insights, but recognizing a lot of these vacant uh, um, and these high vacancy neighborhoods, the other big problem is vacant homes. And so we're doing a kind of a low cost remediation, uh, putting working windows and doors on vacant houses and seeing if we can uh, see uh, the same kind of crime uh, gun violence reduction benefits by sealing up uh, vacant homes. Um, that is actually much more costly to do um, and it's much harder to scale. Um, uh, but there is some empirical evidence that shootings tend to even cluster more around these vacant houses. Um, and so, you know, we'll see what happens and as a consequence of, of that work. Um, and just kind of last plug is, um, you know, this isn't really complicated work to do, right? You don't, requ doesn't require like a charismatic leader, um, you know, um, somebody to give a special, you know, kind of behavioral therapy program or something like that. This is really some, it requires organizational skills. Somebody can manage contractors, make sure that people show up and do the work. Uh, the basic model is pretty simple. Um, 
Uh, and, uh, you know, so strategic cleanups to cities, I think, could be part of a package of kind of gun violence. And then where st statisticians come into play is when you're doing these kinds of place-based trials, it's really important to have a sense of power, uh, the design to have done it done correctly. Um, because if we hadn't had that help, I mean, you always run the risk of running a trial and then in the end, getting back to kind of Terry's point, like, well, we don't have the power to detect anything here. Um, and so, um, and, you know, so there's a long history of statistics doing this kind of work and, uh, you know, everyone, uh, I think, and there's less political divisiveness over this too. I don't, uh, I don't even think the NRA would come out against uh, remediating vacant lots. Um, but, Never say never, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Um, uh, and, you know, there are some other uh, issues that often come up. Uh, the one issue that comes up is, often is, is gentrification. Isn't this just going to lead to gentrification? Um, that may be the case in Boston, um, Washington, D.C. Uh, that is not a big problem in Strawberry Mansion in, in uh, North uh, West Philadelphia. I was just there two days ago. Um, uh, now there are some neighborhoods nearby where that's happening. Um, but, you know, for the most part, these are places of extreme poverty. Um, and I think that, um, you know, um, that's something you might want in some cities that have to be watchful for uh, in terms of not pushing people out. But there's other ways to address that. Um, uh, inaction and concentrated poverty, I think, are worse. Uh, uh, I think we know enough, of the, there's enough good research to point to that, uh, that uh, but, so, but that's an issue that comes up every time I talk to, especially city officials about this. Real concern that this is just going to beautify an area and then developers are going to come in and Starbucks and, you know, and hipsters and then everyone's going to get pushed out. Um, and, uh, you know, so that's something to be mindful of in some cities. But I think in, in the cities that really have ba abandonment vacancy problems, um, North uh, St. Louis, you know, this is not, there's not going to be a mad rush. You know, Google's not, you know, not coming to these towns. Uh, people aren't getting stock options um, and building million dollar condominiums. So, uh, but it is something to be mindful of in some places. All right. Thank you.